love this piece, oh my god. Hi guys, it's Beth. Welcome back to my channel. We got invited to a private showing of the new Rolex 2021 watches by Watches of Switzerland. They had all the new 2021 Rolex models to showcase and the event was beautifully staged and executed. First up though, I want to show you guys what I'm wearing and it's my new AP Royal Oak 15450 in white. She's a 37 millimeter in all stainless steel with a clean, crisp white dial that I adore so much. And she's a new pickup that I'm going to unbox and review with you guys coming up soon. So the private event was perfectly and cozily set up via appointments so that we'd be allotted a certain time to see and try on all the new watches and to allow sanitizing of the watches afterwards. They had all these huge, luscious plants that made the room feel cozy and inviting and appetizers, drinks, and Macallan whiskey to tie the whole event together. Watches of Switzerland was even kind enough to send us home with a nice gift after the event, and everything couldn't have gone smoother. Now to the main event. There were a couple of cases and a lot of watches to go through in such short time, so I picked out the ones that caught my eye and tried them on for you guys. First box up is the all new Datejusts. These are all 36 millimeters and come in new colored pattern dials. The champagne dial stood out to me when they were first announced at Watches and Wonders 2021. From afar, these look like the classic recognizable Rolex Datejust. This one has a champagne dial with a Rolosaur yellow gold and stainless steel oyster bracelet like your classic Datejust would, but with a golden palm pattern that blends into the dial. It's a different new look that speaks more fun for this year's release, whereas last year's fun factor was in the new bright colors for the OPs. This next new Datejust looks just like the previous one, but with the Jubilee bracelet and a golden fluted dial, which is stated to be the new Jubilee dial. I also tried on the classic blue version of the Datejust with that fluted dial. The next box had some more new Datejusts in 36mm and one blue one in 31mm, all with Roman numerals. Next up, we have some new day dates in different sizes, metals, hour markers, and colors.
The one that caught my eye was the new Datejust 40 in platinum. It has an ice baby blue dial with a presidential bracelet. And because this is a full platinum watch, it's definitely very heavy. Without even needing diamonds, this is definitely what I'd call an icy watch. Next, there's the new Sky Dwellers, which for the first time are being offered on a Jubilee bracelet. The Jubilee bracelets give the Sky Dweller a different look and to me, even blend in with the fluted bezel. Compared to on the Oyster bracelets, these new models look more complex and sophisticated, especially on Rolex's most complex watch, like the Sky Dweller. The Sky Dweller's a bit too big at 42 millimeters for my wrist, so I had my friend Alex try on the black one for you guys. Then we have the new ish GMTs. These are the two GMT Master 2s, nicknamed as the Batman and Pepsi, that are now being offered on the Oyster bracelet, as well as on the Jubilee bracelet. The original Batman on the Oyster was discontinued a while back, making the newer Jubilee option the only one available as of last year. The modern stainless steel Pepsi was originally only offered on the Jubilee, but is now on an Oyster as well. So, it's good news for those who love the two colorful GMTs and have a slight preference to either bracelet, as you can now have the option of getting the Batman or Pepsi on an Oyster or Jubilee bracelet, though you guys know I'm biased towards the Jubilee. On, there's the new Explorer 2s, where the only change is a new movement. Aesthetically, they look the same as the previous model, but with a new caliber 3285. The white Explorer is one of my favorite Rolex sports models that I personally think is underrated. The subtle orange GMT hand against the stark white dial finished off with the all silver stainless steel look is an aesthetic I love. I love the black version as well, but just find the white Explorer 2 more feminine for me. From there, there's a new Explorer 1, which seems to be the hot topic when Rolex announced their 2021 releases. The new Explorer now comes in a 36mm, a downsize from 39mm. The Explorer originally came in a 36mm back in 1953, so it made many fans of the watch happy when Rolex brought back the OG size. The new 36mm model has a black dial and comes in the all stainless steel model, as well as the new two-tone Rolosaur model. The stainless steel with yellow gold combo is new and to me, gives the Explorer a whole new look. The Rolosaur gives it a dressier, polished vibe versus the sporty, rugged vibe the full stainless steel holds. Last but not least, we have the ultimate box, which to me was the highlight of the show. I felt like the new Daytonas, especially the Meteorite Daytonas, weren't talked about as much, and to me, these new models are stunning. It's the first time the Daytona comes in a Meteorite dial with a ceramic bezel. There was a previous, less popular Meteorite Daytona that had an aluminum bezel and Roman numerals, but this is the first time the Meteorite is coming with the modern ceramic Daytona, and it looks amazing. These dials make the watch extra special as they're cut from and made with an actual fallen meteorite. The dial is incredibly beautiful and unique with its glistening streaks that glimmer as you turn it and place it in sunlight. I think the ceramic Daytona with the meteorite dial make a killer combo and to me the meteorite gives it an extra wow factor. They all measure 40 millimeters and come in different bracelet and strap options and finishes. 
First up, this Everose Daytona took me by surprise and kind of made my heart flutter. It doesn't feature a meteorite dial, but it has a soft, feminine, monotone aesthetic that I loved. The All Everose case blends with the soft sundust pink dial, and it's beautifully accented with subtle baguettes that glimmer ever so lightly. You guys know I'm not normally one for diamonds in my watches, but the baguettes in this piece softly glisten and dance with the light and accent the Everose. Next is the Meteorite Daytona with the Oyster Flex strap. It has a white gold case that nicely balances with the white Meteorite dial. I think the Oyster Flex gives the piece a fresh, sportier, masculine look. And lastly, we have my favorite piece from the collection, the full Everose Meteorite Daytona. It's that extra pink Rolex Everose with the extra special glistening meteorite dial that make the piece beautifully feminine and stunning to me. The dial speaks for itself and my soft spot for rose gold made me not want to take off the piece. Watches of Switzerland also had some Rolexes for sale at the event, which I'll quickly show you guys.
And that's all. Let me know down in the comments which piece from the 2021 collection was your favorite. Give the video a cute little thumbs up if you like coming along with me. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more private experiences like this and follow me on Instagram for all updates. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you soon.